Hi, it's Alex. Today I want to talk about older teachers sexually harassing their students. And it's something that really bothers me. But there's also some stuff in the dialogue about the issue, like how people talk about the teachers that bothers me. And I want to kind of like address all of this. I obviously think that sexual harassment and sexual abuse are really horrible things. Uh, they can really negatively impact people. And they're things I care about stopping a lot. Like, it's something close to me. Like, I've seen people be harassed firsthand by uh, their teachers. And I've also talked to people who have been sexually abused uh, by various people in their lives. Various authority figures. So that can include teachers and also other people like uh, I knew an instance of like a church pastor who did this. This really bothers me and I really want to stop it. Sometimes though, when I hear people talking about this problem, they talk about it in a way that I think isn't really like pinning down the right thing to target. What I want to target ultimately is people's behavior. Like I don't think it's okay for a teacher to make sexual advances on a student even when the student is over 18. Like, I've taught college before, many of my students, most of my students are over 18, but there's still this power relationship of, like, teacher-student, the teacher is in a position of authority, and I just don't think it's okay to make an advance on a, on a student in that context because of that power relationship. Like, if later you no longer have that authority relationship with the person, and you get to know the person in a different context, and you all both mutually decide to get involved, that's a different thing. I'm not talking about that, I'm talking about when you're in this teacher-student relationship. And if the people are under 18, because there's a pretty strong consensus in our society that that's not appropriate, I think it's really important to respect that and just not make advances on students. I mean, it seems so common sense, but like, obviously people have trouble with this. I think that's the important thing to focus on, though. Some of the dialogue I've seen ends up focusing on the teacher's thoughts or feelings of attraction. And that really bothers me. Like, I've seen some stuff on Tumblr going around, and a lot of it will get a lot of notes, like a lot of people are reblogging it, and it'll say things like, oh, what the hell is wrong with these older teachers? They shouldn't even be attracted to younger students, like, they're pedophiles and things like that, and like goes on and on about these teachers, kind of demonizing them, shaming them, attacking them for merely feeling attracted to their students. And I have a lot of things to say about that. First of all, uh, in most cases, we're not really talking about pedophilia. Pedophilia is when someone is sexually attracted to children, uh, especially with most high school students, most of them have gone through puberty, they are still not considered legal adults, but biologically and de developmentally, they are more like adults, and they have these secondary sexual characteristics. And I think it's just natural, it's part of human biology, that people are going to feel attracted to some of these people. Uh, I don't think that that's a problem. I don't think that it's merely a problem if a teacher feels attracted to their students. And I think people don't necessarily control attraction. Like, just like people don't choose to be gay or straight, people don't choose who they feel attracted to. What they choose is how to act on that attraction. So, I think that this dialogue that shames and condemns and attacks teachers for merely being attracted to their students is kind of really misguided and has a really negative impact. I also think that this sort of rhetoric might actually be increasing the likelihood of sexual harassment and abuse. And I want to explain this. Like, if we focus on the teacher's behavior, that's something that they can control and that they can change. Like, if a person is making comments that overstep personal boundaries, like they're too sexual or they are perceived as a sexual advance, you can talk to the person and be like, hey, this is not okay, stop doing it. You can fire the person and give that comment as grounds for firing them. It's sort of like an empowering thing to focus on. You can't really focus on thoughts. You can't 
observe them directly. They only come out indirectly through people's actions. We don't really know what people are thinking. I also think that it can be really damaging when we shame or attack people for their thoughts. Like, when there's a post out there that says, oh, look at these teachers, they're so creepy for being attracted to their students who are under 18, or something like that. There are probably a lot of teachers out there who feel attracted to some of their students who happen to be under 18, and they're not acting on it. They are treating these students with respect. They are not ever making advances on their students. They are not ever making sexual comments to their students. They're very cautious about respecting those boundaries and treating people consistently with respect. But they still have these feelings of attraction. And I think there's a danger if people start feeling like that's inherently wrong. They will start feeling guilty when they really haven't done anything wrong. It's just a natural part of biology that we feel attracted to other people. And because we have this idea of 18 meaning adulthood, and that corresponds to sometimes many years after people go through puberty and develop these secondary sexual characteristics, because of that, a lot of people are just naturally going to be attracted to people who are in this awkward age range of like having gone through puberty but not being a legal adult. It doesn't mean they're a pedophile, it doesn't mean that they are going to harass a person, it doesn't mean they're doing anything wrong. Um, and I think that if we say that they're doing something wrong, it can lead these people to feel guilty. And I actually think that that may be increasing the likelihood that people commit abuse or sexual harassment of students. How do I think this is true? This is a little bit speculative, but one thing that is not speculative is the idea of self-fulfilling prophecy created by expectations. This is certainly true in education. There's a lot of research, there's studies that have been done on how if a teacher expects something of a class, then those results are more likely to come into being. Like, if you believe that the class is full of like gifted and talented students, then the class will perform better. And similarly, if you believe that the people in the class have behavioral problems, uh, then you will be more likely to find that the class has behavioral problems, and it, it's because of how the t teacher treats them and interacts with them. I think that this kind of self-fulfilling prophecy can also play out in terms of the teacher, like how people treat the teacher. And if you have a whole bunch of people in society telling the teacher, you are creepy, you are a pedophile, you are like messed up in the head, you have something wrong with you, things like that, you're doing something wrong, they can internalize that. And I think that if, if someone starts genuinely believing that they are creepy, they are inherently a creepy person, their sexual desires are inherently creepy and wrong and bad, what kind of behavior do you think that's going to translate into? Do you think that feeling that way about yourself is going to help you to respect boundaries? Do you think it's going to help you to uh, treat students in a way that is non-sexual? I honestly think that it's probably going to have the opposite effect. And I look at the prevalence of sexual harassment and sexual abuse, and it seems to me like we have a major problem with this. Like, one of my friends works in a middle school, and she has two co-workers of hers have been fired for having sex with students in a middle school. That's really messed up. So whatever we're doing in the rhetoric surrounding this issue isn't working. And I personally think that targeting the behavior rather than the sort of sexual desire, which people don't necessarily control, they, they don't have the ability to change it in all cases. They can choose to focus on it or not, but they can't necessarily change it. I think that targeting the attraction and the sexual feelings and thoughts that are private, I think that is the wrong way to go. I think it is really damaging. I'd like us to start focusing on the outward behavior, the choices people make, the things that people choose to focus on, the things that people ultimately have control over. So I hope I've challenged some of these ideas. I'd love to hear from you, and also I would love for you to share this video if you agree with me, if you think that it has the potential of advancing this issue and protecting people from sexual harassment and abuse. Uh, I'd love for you to share this video. Um, anyway, thank you for your time, and hope to make more videos soon.